Moto Coaster is the launched motorbike coaster at Dreamworld in Australia. This was Intamin's first straddle coaster and has gone on to be one of their more popular models. But did they get it right in their first try? In short, no. Let me explain why in this review. Vacoma introduced the first motorbike coaster in 2004 with Booster Bike at Toverland. This was an exciting new genre where you'd get to experience the leaned over riding position of a motorcycle crossed with the thrills of a roller coaster. Seeing the potential of this model, other manufacturers looked into providing their own experiences with similar seating, an experience that has now gone on to being referred to as the straddle coaster. Intamin unveiled their first straddle coaster in 2007 with Mick Duhon's Moto Coaster at Dreamworld. This ride was named after the famous Australian motorcycle road race champion. Post pandemic, the tie-in was dropped and the name was shortened to just Moto Coaster. This ride is located towards the back half of the park's ride area. This site used to be home to the park's vintage cars, but they were relocated to the animal area to accommodate this attraction. While Moto Coaster's main layout is to the left of the train station, the entrance is located off to the right behind it. And I'm not the biggest fan of this ride's looks. I do love the multicolored trains, those look fantastic, but the main course looks pretty blah. The yellow track and black supports look fine, but the whole area looks like a construction site. You had some temporary fencing around it and minimally landscaped dirt. Now, maybe they were going for the dirt bike aesthetic, but it's not too appealing to the eyes in my opinion. Heading here first is a wise decision, assuming you get to the park at opening. This is what we did, so we were able to avoid a wait. But this ride has a lot of queue space and a line that moves at a snail's pace. This coaster only had one train in the course, which seems to be a common occurrence at Dreamworld, and each train seats just 16 riders. Add in slow dispatches due to awkward restraints, and it's no surprise why this queue line moves at a glacial rate. One key note if you purchase the Ride Express Skip the Line Pass. You'll have to deal with Moto Coaster's line too. Moto Coaster is currently not included on the Skip the Line service. I found its exclusion a bit strange considering it's one of the park's bigger rides, and a picture of the ride is used when you buy the Skip the Line Pass, but it is what it is. You have 8 rows, each seating 2 riders. The first 6 rows feature 2 motorcycles side by side. The back 2 rows have a motorcycle on the left and a sidecar on the right. These rows are similar to what you see in Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure at Islands of Adventure. While this decision was made for thematic reasons on Hagrid's, it was done for accessibility purposes here. The sidecar can accommodate guests as short as 43 inches or 110 centimeters. You must be 53 inches or 135 centimeters tall to ride in the motorbike seats. When you reach the station, there are three separate queue lines, one for the sidecar, one for the standard rows, and one for a single rider line. However, the latter was blocked off during my visit, so not sure how often they use it. When guests are admitted into the station, seating is on a first come basis. If the row you want is already taken, the attendants may let you weigh an extra cycle if you ask nicely. Before getting to your gate, make sure to store all your belongings on this rotating bin. This includes bags, anything in your pockets, and even glasses with a strap. It's standard protocol in Australia. Now this rotating bin system works pretty well. The ride has a separate load and unload platform. You put items on this bin before you go to your seat, and then they're spun over to the exit platform when you depart. As for which seat you'll want, the front is marginally better for the unobstructed view and slightly smoother ride, but the big thing is that I would just advise avoiding the sidecar if you're tall enough to ride in a motorbike. Go for the more unique riding position. Now let's talk about one of this ride's biggest cons, the restraints. Getting on the motorbikes is a process. You first have to straddle the bike. Then you need to wedge your feet into these small cutouts on each side. It's harder than it looks. Then you need to pull the front of the bike towards you, so it's over your thighs. Then there's this back restraint that swivels sideways and is pushed firmly against your back. I know some find this part of the restraint a bit uncomfortable, but it didn't cause an issue for me. All these steps are why dispatches are not the quickest. The final position reminds me of a Zamperla motorbike coaster, just with less legroom 
and the extra step of pulling the bike towards you. I can see why Intamin went away from this on their newer straddle coasters. On those rides, you're in a seated position and secure with a more traditional lap bar. You then lean forwards, being supported by handlebars, to get that motorbike experience. This is far more comfortable, freeing, and efficient. Once secured, you have a countdown launch right out of the station. You're propelled forwards by a series of tires. While the launch mechanism appears to be similar to the other Intamin straddle coasters, there are two big changes here. First, Moto Coaster's tires are controlled by a hydraulic system. Second, it does not have the same kick as the other Intamin tire launches, which is surprising because the latter ones do not have hydraulics involved. If you have experienced the second launch on Luna Park's Big Dipper, or any of the launches on Juvalent or Summerland, you know these launches try to peel your body backwards. You do not get that on Moto Coaster. It has okay power at best, as you accelerate to 45 miles per hour or 72 kilometers per hour. This leads to a low and wide turn. It is the most forceful part of the ride by far, providing decent G's. Unfortunately, that is the only force you'll get on this ride. While the coaster never goes higher than 23 feet or 7 meters, it just does not have a strong sense of speed. You have a figure 8 layout, and all the elements are really drawn out. Compare that to Intamin's newer straddle coasters that have more compact elements. These enhance the speed while also dishing out some laterals or G's. After that first low turn, you have another big turn. Then you have a speed hill. It may give a smidge of weightlessness in back, but nothing anywhere else. You then have two more laps in the figure 8 pattern. The turns are a bit tighter because they're on the inside of the turns you already experienced, but the loss of speed by this point renders that moot. You then have a slow, drawn out S hill taking you past the station and towards the brakes. You then meekly hop upwards and slow to a crawl. You then return to the unload platform, ending the 1,985 foot or 605 meter long coaster. As you may have surmised, this ride's pacing is pretty weak. Most of the ride feels like filler, which is not good when you have such a short track length to begin with. As for smoothness, the front row was fine but I did notice a bit of a jitter further back in the train. So if you find the restraints uncomfortable being bound together, this can lead to problems. I think it's one of the main reasons this coaster was towards the bottom of the last few Mitch Hawker polls that were conducted. So what would I rate the Moto Coaster? I would give this ride a 3 out of 10. This is my least favorite motorbike coaster. While the unique seating position is fun, the layout squanders the opportunity. The course is a repetitive series of dull turns. Then the launch does not have the same oomph as the other motorbike coasters out there, whether they be from Intamin or another manufacturer. Ultimately, this ride comes off as a flawed family coaster to me. It's a very mild layout suitable for kids, but only two of the 16 seats can actually accommodate younger riders. So those are my thoughts on DreamWorld's Moto Coaster. What are your thoughts on this ride? Do you agree it's an underwhelming motorbike coaster, or are you more forgiving of the experience than me? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.